So guys, let me tell you today my story. My story as I was a student trying to appear for the exam. I'll tell you what I faced and how I came across different situations. Guys, when I was writing my CA final exam, as soon as I passed my CA inter or the IPCC like it was called earlier, when I wrote it was IPCC. So we had a, the results which came out and everyone have just passed. We have just passed. Now I passed with probably about 359 marks where 350 was the pass. Now when such thing happened, first thing I came out with, let me try to score 486, uh, 860s as far as your CA final exam was concerned. Now as I progressed through the exam, then I understood that one by one, one one preparation went on and I understood that scoring 60 in all subjects was not the same. For me, it was definitely not the same. I liked a few subjects probably because the faculty was really good or probably the subject had something interesting to me. Now, you will always come across situations where sometimes a faculty might create an interest in the concept. If I am one such for you, then thank you for that. But for me, there were a few faculties who actually created an interest in that particular subject. Few subjects by themselves were actually interesting. Irrespective of who was teaching it, I was always interested in the top. For me, income tax was one such top. So if I look at this concept, Yes, guys. So we had every such concept or interesting concepts which came. So we always had a few faculties who created the interest in the subject. So as we understood that each subject went by, it was not possible to actually meet my target of 60, 60, 60 in eight subjects. It was not really possible. I understood that very well in advance that I should be really thankful to my uh, common sense out there. Okay. Because if you or any of you are of that concept that it is possible for me to score the same amount of marks in each subject and let me tell you that is not possible that is definitely not possible so you need to understand that it is not possible to score 60s in all subjects then how do i get an aggregate or 50s in all subjects how do i get an aggregate remember guys there are always few topics which you need to understand or few subjects which you need to understand are your strength and always exploit the strength Exploit the strength means I'm talking about scoring at least an 80 marks. I'm at least asking you to score 80 marks is what I'm talking about. Now that is your target. Now where you will reach in that target that depends. Now I did score financial reporting a 91 out there. Costing I scored 79 out there. Now if you look at my, my other marks you will start laughing at. My auditing is 41. My information technology and uh, uh, your ISCA information systems control audit was something close to 40. Now the other subjects I did not fare well because I knew that I had a weakness in such and certain subjects like that. Now sir you are telling me as if it is a textbook theory as if I know Virat Kohli will come down tomorrow and score a hundred or Rohit Sharma will come down tomorrow and score a hundred. I know that it is not possible. Sometimes you find that a very set batsman can get out on a zero or a very esteemed batsman can get out on zero and that same thing can happen to you. You have selected a particular subject saying that this is my core subject and where you go into the exam hall and you completely fail in meeting your targets. That is very much possible. It happened to me with the help of SFM. SFM, I thought strategic financial management, I will be scoring at least a 70 or a 75. I landed up scoring 46. I knew right after the exam, I knew that it was not possible for me to even touch 50 in that particular exam. 
Now, it may be because the paper was tough or maybe I did not have the right mindset to approach towards the exam. So it can happen. Even financial reporting, it can happen because it's the first exam. I'll tell you why financial reporting is very tricky. Because it is probably your first exam that you will be writing after your entire three years of a break. Last exam that you might have written was your IPCC exam long time back or CA inter exam long time back and now trying to appear for your CA final exam altogether, three hours sitting in the exam hall itself is difficult because you are not used to it. We are used to audit, we are used to going to the client's place and have a good meal out there or do some work out there. So our mindset is not tuned in such a way that you will have to record write the exam. So writing the exam for three hours might also become difficult when you are approaching for the first subject. I know by the time you come to the end of the first group or towards the end of the second group, it might become easy for you. But that is the reason why financial reporting is a little more tricky than any other subject because you are hitting the exam hall right and the first exam paper that you receive is your financial report. So I am not saying that financial reporting only is important. I am saying that it is 1 by 8 but a little more than 1 by 8 as far as your effort is concerned. First exam not fared well, you cannot have enough confidence to approach towards the other exam. It is not uh, sufficient enough or you may not have sufficient confidence towards approaching the other subjects. So that is the reason why I am trying to tell you that please be cautious as far as your FR paper is concerned. And try to make sure that you identify what is your major plus. For me, when I, I looked at my eight subject, I said I may not be doing very well as far as my theory papers are concerned. So I did not want to play around with law and audit, neither I wanted to play around with ISCA. So I was left out with only few options. So I selected, let me do financial reporting, strategic financial management, your SCM or costing, earlier it was called as, uh, I think management something. So there was a paper name was completely changed. So let's say costing which is your paper file and I thought I did because obviously for you now GST is a very concise topic because it's a very new act. You don't have too many case laws. You don't have too many things that are, that you have to study upon compared to income tax act. Income tax act is quite voluminous. So I selected these four topics and I said these four are my core topics. These are the four scoring areas which I will be looking at. Even if I can score out on, on three subjects that is sufficient. Though I selected four, I said there is a probability that I will only score big in three subjects. But I was still happy with that. So my effort during these four subjects were in such a way that I exploit the subject to the maximum extent possible. See, if I have 80 hours of a preparation time, I'm just taking an exam. If I have 80 hours of a preparation time, I am not going to spend 10 hours on each subject. I am going to spend 12 hours on the subjects which I feel are most important to me or my scoring areas. I On those four subjects, I spent actually 12 hours. But on the other subjects where I, fought, where I felt that, you know, probably I may not be able to score big, I was very happy with, receive, with only allocating 8 hours. There. That means to each of such subject which I felt was important to me for my scoring pattern, I allocated 50% excess time. Other paper 8 hours, to this paper I spent 12 hours, almost 4 hours extra that is 50% extra. That is how I started approaching towards the paper and I expect you people also to have a similar approach for the remaining time that you have as far as your preparation is concerned. But already by now you might have made a plan, so please make sure that you make certain changes to the plan in such a way that at least a few subjects are there which touch at least 70s or 80s there. Because this 70s and 80s are important to pull out all the other topics out of your aggregates. So because you always have to land up with a few 40s. And this lecture which I am talking about or this uh, content which I am delivering is for those people who are not targeting ranks. Because most of us do belong to that sect of category where ranks are not the priority. For us pass is the priority. First you pass then we will think about everything else later. So. My intention is very simple. Leave about financial reporting. I am not saying that you have to select financial reporting among the top four. It is absolutely your wish. If you feel that financial reporting is not something that you can score with, you can let it be. 
you can only target at getting at least a 45 marks in financial reporting have a good scoring in any other subject i am not saying financial reporting should be an among among your four subjects so it will i leave it to you but that is the best of your judgment to apply now someone who believe that financial reporting is your core topic and where you expect to score at least a 70 or 80 not 60 60 is exemption but scoring means 70s or 80s a minimum of 70 and up to 80 or 90 is what you can generally target as far as your financial reporting paper is concerned first thing that i wanted to put up is this is a theory paper in major context in major context that means at least more than 50 marks is a pure application of your indias it's a pure application of indias therefore you might come across a situation where you believe that this is a theory so i expect you to at least revise through the entire standards at least six times now so six times revision what i'll do with the remaining subjects when i said six times revision observe my first revision could take about four days or five days for the entire index if i'm allocating at least 10 to 12 days uh, 12 hours a day or 8 to 10 hours a day it might take about five days so first revision could take so much of time second revision i'll have to cut down the time allocated by at least 30 percent like that if you go about by the time i come to the fourth revision i might be doing the entire revision probably in less than two days my last revision that is the sixth revision or the fifth revision i can do it within one and a half day or even less than that that is the amount of time allocated to each subject because you need to make sure that entire 800 marks is approached with so don't spend too much of time on one single paper be it financial reporting or any other subject financial reporting one mark extra you need to get or a bit more cautious you have to be because it is the first paper as far as your cfi is concerned since it is the first paper have a massive impact on your confidence in approaching the other papers so a little more cautious as far as your fr and sfm is concerned your fr went well sfm went well aggregate goes well no problem the remaining subjects i have sufficient confidence to approach so that is the exact reason why i was telling so first thing i told you revise second thing sometimes it might you might come across a situation where you are not able to complete the revision in the given time or you are not able to revise a particular topic in the given time i allocated two days for my revision i could not complete one two three four standards the problem no problem leave it next time when you start the revision start with those topics which you have avoided because they are going to take substantially a longer time than the other topics which have already revised here so remember this logic always time boxing is called a, this technique this technique is called as time boxing time boxing means within the time how much ever happens i will do and if something is not possible to be done within this particular time limit which i have given then leave that i will tackle it at a later point of time exam is concerned one exam question is choice right so that means i'm looking at an exam paper of almost 120 marks internal choice i'm ignoring okay i'm looking at 120 marks of an exam paper 20 marks is choice another 20 marks choice you take that means i'm asking you people to approach towards the exam with an intention to write only 80 marks write 80 marks good enough that is my intention to approach towards the exam so i would say that i am successful in appearing for financial reporting paper if i have successfully attempted at least 80 marks sir 80 marks over another 15 minutes or 10 minutes of time was left then you touch one of the subject one of the topics which you left as choice and try to answer some part of it i approached it in a similar manner i might have scored 91 guys but my approach was very similar i will go there with zero tension so what is my zero tension one choice anyways he'll give one choice anyways i'll take i started reading the paper one question looked as if i was doubtful regarding that that particular topic so i left it out i said this is my choice another question came up again i was not so confident in appearing for that for that particular question or answering that particular question i said this is my second choice that gave me a liberty to exploit the remaining part of the paper 
So by the time I completed my 80 marks or my allocated four uh, topics, four questions, I was still left out with a healthy 25 minutes. That healthy 25 minutes, I made a decision of answering those two, any of those two questions, which I left as choice. I made it and I started solving it. Within 20 minutes, I could solve it. Five minutes, I had a quick browse through what I've written. If any decorations was necessary, like underline or something, I did hand it over the paper, scored a 91 and came up. My students have exceeded me at least six times. It is my own students whom I have addressed in any particular class in the last nine years. They have exceeded my 91 marks six times they have exceeded. So if you say, sir, you are teaching, that's why 91. I student, how 91? Then also 91. What 91? More than 91. The highest score of my student is 96. So how did he get that 96 is some question that we need, we need to ask. He is also answering the same paper, right? Like how we are answering. So that means he is able to approach the paper in a different way. Now there were so many people who are sitting in my class. There are also people who failed the exam. Now when I said 6 people crossed 91. Now I might look as if I am praising myself but I am not. Because there were so many people who were sitting in the same class. But failed to clear financial reporting as well. They might have caught less than 40 marks as well. I don't know. I only know people who have scored big. What about those people who could not even score a 40? Now, what was the difference? It is the same me. It is the same me. I delivered the class in the same way. But ultimately, you need to understand the approach of the student is what actually mattered. If you think a faculty makes the, all the sense, then you need to observe that that faculty has a 100% track record of making sure that everyone passed his subject, which is not possible. It is not possible because majority of the effort is belonging to the student himself. So approach towards the exam should be with context that I am appearing only for 80 marks. It gives you a lot of confidence when you come across a particular question where you are not confident enough in approaching towards the answer. So can I take a choice while preparing? I will be wrong if I tell you that you cannot take a choice while preparing. I will be wrong because I myself did that. I myself did that but not in the subjects which I liked. I like the subject of IDT, I like the subject of SFM, I like the subject of costing, I like the subject of financial reporting. I never took a choice because I don't have a choice. Because my target was hitting 80 marks there or at least 70 there. So therefore I did not take a choice in any of such kind of topics where I wanted to score the maximum marks. I took choice. Auditing, sufficient choices I do. Law, so many more choices I have taken, but thankfully those were not really asked in the exam too many times. So that is the reason why I at least had a judgment in making my choice. Someone has asked me, can I take consolidated financial statements as choice because it is taking a long time for me to solve. Have a look at January 2020 paper, uh, Jan 2021 paper. First question, compulsory question on consolidation. That's why I said never take a choice when you feel that this is the subject that you have to score the maximum. So you can always take a choice. Now, let me limit myself to FR now because I've given you an overview of how your approach towards your preparation should be. Let me just take you through the entire way in which the FR paper has to be approached with in understanding what is the essence or which top topic is more important than the other. Now, I go with an ABC analysis class. In my ABC analysis, the first one which I say is the most important concept of all or the category A questions is where I generally find a question appearing in every paper. Every exam paper, I find these questions and these questions put together constitute to at least 50 to 60 marks of your paper. That means if someone is looking at scoring just a 45 or 50 in this paper, then your category A marks are sufficient with financial instruments, in days 115, your contracts with customer that we have discussed yesterday, your property plan and equipment, intangible assets and investment property which we have dealt as per India 16, 38 and 40. Consolidated financial statements along with business combination and share based paper. These things put together carry at least 60 marks. 
saying at least 60 marks. That means a major part of my subject is stored in these five topics itself. So these five topics extensively you need to solve problems. Extensively I expect you to keep on solving problems on these topics because I know that these topics will at least be covering 60 marks of my paper. Clear? Now, once I'm done with these topics, that is my most em more major emphasis topics, I'll go into the second category where I look at category B. My category B when I'm talking about, I am looking at topics which have been appearing but the weightage is not so much. The six topics which I have given under category B in total, in total would maximum be appearing for about 30 marks. Maximum be coming up for about 30 marks. So you can put a weightage of 25 to 30 marks as far as this topic is concerned. What are the topics which I am looking under category B? Income tax under India is 12. Employee benefits under India is 19. These are compulsory questions, right? But the weightage is a little less. Impairment of assets under India is 36. Operating segments under 108. Non-current assets held for sale and discontinued operations under 105. And fair value measurement under 113. These six topics put together would approximately come to about 25 marks. I would say not more than 30 marks is the topics of category B. So if you are looking at scoring an exemption, then your category A and category B together have to be dealt with. If you are looking at scoring an exemption, then category A of 60 marks, category B of 25 marks, at least this 85 marks, you have to be thorough with. Sir, my topic guys, my topic sir, Pakka, I have to score the maximum out of this subject because aggregate is based on this subject. I agree. Some of your students might be of that approach. Then for you, there is no category A, no category B. You will have to apply even your corporate social responsibility, your integrated reporting, your index 1, 8, 10, cash flow statements under index 7. You have to talk about each and every subject or each and every index. Your index 41, which dealt with agriculture, index 23, which dealt with borrowing cost. All the other standards like India S21 which dealt with accounting for foreign exchange rates. So everything has to be covered for those people who are expecting to get at least a 70 or 80 marks as far as this topic is concerned. So you people cannot have a choice. But for all those people who are scoring only 45, then your major consideration or 80% of your preparation has to go into category A. Your 80% of preparation goes into category A. Balanced 20% preparation can go into category B and leave it there. For those people who are scoring, trying to score an exemption, then 60% of your preparation in category A topics, 30% of preparation in category B topics, and 10% preparation in category C or other topics. I'm not showing you category C because it includes all of the topics. For those people who say that, sir, 80, sir. My concept is 80, sir. 50% is your concentration on part A or category A, 25% to 30% on category B, 20% on compulsory category C as well because that itself also carries another 20 marks. Total put together should carry about 15 to 20 marks in part C category. So I will still exploit that because that 15 to 20 marks is important for me to pull myself out of 70s or 80s. Clear? This is how your preparation has to go. Now guys, I made an effort to basically identify what are the suggested answers for each question which has appeared in the last four attempts. Starting from November 19, I have, sorry, from May 19, I have suggested answers provided for each of the attempt. You can look at either my, my channel on Telegram or my page on Facebook. You will find these solved answers. That will help you understand how to present an answer as far as your exam is concerned. 5 marks should be 5 lines or 1 full page. All these topics I am not going to discuss. Because let's be grown up. You need to understand that 5 marks is based on the quality of your 5 marks that you have written. Not based on the quantity. This is not your BCom exam. Clear? I am not going to measure your performance based on the number of pages you have written. I will only measure it based on 
how you have written those marks clear with that now if you want to take down your category a and category b you can 